Hi everyone. Welcome to the Eating for Energy webinar. My name is Olga Hayes. I am with Sharp Best Health, our employee wellness program for Sharp employees. And I welcome everyone today. Thank you for taking this time for yourself to learn a little bit about how to use nutrition to maximize your energy throughout the day. Um, I just want to kind of start by saying that it's OK to be busy. We are so stressed right now. We are so overwhelmed with everything that's going on um, in the world and in our personal lives. Right. And so we are kind of in this energy crisis as a society and as individuals. And so sometimes we just need a little more energy throughout our day. And yes, we can take breaks and yes, hopefully we take uh, care of ourselves and um, practice self care and sleep enough. But the one thing we can do as well to help us maximize our energy is to nourish our bodies with the right foods. And so today we're going to talk about that and what kind of foods we can eat to help us maximize our energy levels throughout the day. So today's lineup, this is uh, just to let you know what's coming up today. Uh, we will talk about energy draining foods and energy boosting foods. We'll talk about some nutrients that can help us increase our energy and fight fatigue throughout the day. And we'll talk about timing of our meals and other practical strategies and tips to help you sustain your energy throughout the day. If you have any questions, by the way, we'll have a few minutes at the end um, and then you can ask them later or you can email us anytime. Um, so let's get started. Um, if this looks familiar and uh, then you are not alone, it happens so that despite our busy schedules, a lot of times we're just tired throughout the day. We are fatigued. We have no energy and that is um, that is a barrier. That is a barrier to being productive, to being effective with our days, to feeling good about ourselves. So what we want to be is, you know, having a little more energy, maybe like that. I don't know. Um, but the comp, the the bottom line, we want to go from being super tired and wanting to take a nap to having a lot of energy to actually do what we want to do throughout the day. And one of the things, as I mentioned earlier, one of the things we can do is really, really provide ourselves, our bodies with the right nutrition. We need to look at our bodies as um, a car tank, right? It's like an energy tank. And just like a car, our body has to be refueled regularly and it can't run on empty. Just like a car cannot go anywhere without fuel, uh, neither can our bodies. So what we eat matters and we have to fill our tank, our bodies with the right stuff. So let's remember to make sure that our bodies are our energy tanks and we need to provide that with right nutrients. So um, when it comes down to energy draining foods, what are some of the foods that come to mind? And you don't have to respond, but maybe just take a minute just to think to yourself, what are some of the energy draining foods that come to mind when you think about foods that make you tired and lethargic? And I don't think it will be a surprise for any of us to kind of have the answer to this question. Foods that are processed foods are the ones that are energy draining, right? And why are they energy draining? Well, because those foods are mostly high in calories. When it comes to energy draining foods, whatever answer you gave to yourself right now, it's probably going to be something along the lines of pizzas and cakes and candy. Um, all these foods that make us feel lethargic and tired when we eat them, right? Um, so the processed foods, right? There is a word for all these foods, processed foods. And the reason why they um, give us no energy is because they are high in sodium, high in fat, high in sugar, and high in calories. Out after that, did you feel like you wanted to go and conquer the world? Probably not. You probably felt like going and taking a nap after this. Um, and the other component of uh, energy draining foods are foods that we order out or when we eat, when we go out or fast foods. And again, most likely these foods are going to be high in calories and sugar and sodium and, so, um, and fat. So again, those are the foods that are going to make us feel super full and 
that feeling of fullness is not a good feeling. It makes us want to take a nap instead of go and do something productive. So as much as possible, we want to avoid those food. And again, it's not about never enjoying pizza and candy and um, cakes. It's basically just making sure they are not the staple of your diet. They're treats, the indulgences, the occasional um, foods that you enjoy, but they should not make up the majority of your diet. And so when we talk about energy boosting foods, we want to talk about the foods that provide us with long lasting energy that don't give us that energy crush when we eat them that don't want to make us go take a nap. So those are the foods we're going to um, talk about in just a second. One of the things that we need to pay attention to when we talk about choosing foods that provide long lasting energy is our blood sugar levels. So and why is blood sugar level important? Um, so blood sugar or glucose, uh, which comes from Greek word sweet, um, is the main sugar found in our blood. And blood, our blood gets glucose, gets sugar from the foods that we eat, mostly from carbohydrates. So sugar is an important, important component of our diet, not because it tastes so good, but also because glucose is the primary source of energy for us not just for us being able to wake up and walk and take showers and do the work, but for any normal body functions, glucose is the primary source of fuel. So for our brains to work, for our lungs to breathe, for our heart to beat, we require energy and that energy comes from glucose. And so, as I mentioned, glucose mostly comes from foods, from carbohydrates. However, some carbohydrates provide us with glucose that gets broken down and processed super quickly and that gives gives us quick energy which is not long lasting and other foods provide us with uh, with um, glucose that gets broken down and processed by, by by our bodies slower ensuring that that glucose gets absorbed into the bloodstream slower therefore giving us longer lasting energy. So we need to be able to differentiate the foods that give us short energy and long energy. And that's why blood sugar levels are important. So let's look into what happens when our blood sugar levels go too high. So if we get if we eat foods that um, get processed and broken down super quickly into the bloodstream, then we get that spike in our blood sugar levels, right? But as fast as we get that rise in blood sugar level, just as fast we lose the energy and get that energy dip. So that swing, that up and down in blood sugar level can leave us very fatigued, very tired, and can give us headaches and um, inability to focus and concentrate. So we want to avoid that. So for us to have long, steady energy throughout the day, we need to eat foods that provide that um, uh, that stabilize our blood sugar throughout the day. So what foods can do that, right? Let's talk about that. First and foremost, carbohydrates, then proteins, and then fiber. So let's look into each of those components individually. So carbohydrates are something that, again, is very, very important for our diet. They are um, this is the macronutrient that provides 60% of the energy that our bodies require to function day to day. And however, a lot of us are scared of carbohydrates because of the diet mentality and because of um, that thinking that maybe carbohydrates um, are bad for us because they prevent us from losing the weight that we want to lose. However, carbohydrates are not bad at all. They're such a broad category and we just need to remember that it's not about carbohydrates in general it's about types of carbohydrates that we choose for our diet quantity and quality of carbohydrates so let's let's go and let's talk about the types of carbohydrates so the two main categories um, about carbohydrates are simple carbs and complex carbs and which carbohydrates you choose for your diet will really affect your energy levels throughout your day. 
So simple carbs, um, they are basically just, they are made up from simple sugars. They are just two or one sugar molecules linked together. And because there's such short chains of molecules, they get broken down by our bodies very, very, very quickly. So those are the simple carbohydrates that enter our bloodstream super quickly, provide us with a quick source of energy for a very short period of time, followed by a dip in energy. Remember we talked about the spikes up and down in blood sugar level? This is what we want to avoid, and simple carbs lead to that spike and dip. So we want to avoid simple carbs as much as possible throughout our diet. This is uh, just some of the examples of simple carbohydrates that um, are very, very common in our diet. So basic simple sugar, anything with white flour, candy, chocolate, fruit juice, cake, sugary drinks like sodas, packaged cereals, all of those are considered just simple carbohydrates. They're just mostly sugar. They provide very, very, very little nutrition to our bodies and they they lead to us being super tired and um, not feeling uh, nourished or fulfilled. Usually when we eat these foods, not only we feel tired after that, we also don't, don't feel like we ate, we still feel hungry. So there are no, really not many benefits to these foods, unfortunately, because we, we know they taste so great. <laughs> um, and so, Eating too much simple sugars or products that contain uh, just mainly sugar is is really um, can be very harmful, not just for our energy level, but for our health overall. Right. So it can eating uh, foods with a lot of simple sugars can lead to a lot of chronic diseases, including obesity, heart disease, type two diabetes, even sometimes of cancer. So for us to know which foods to avoid, we should learn to look at the labels. And most companies are now required to include how much sugar is in their product. However, um, sugar can carry many, many names. And a lot of times manufacturers um, hide sugar under other names. So it's important to know that um, the word sugar is not the only thing to look at at the label. So things like corn sweetener or fruit juice concentrate or high fructose corn syrup or malt syrup or raw sugar or just even honey, all of those are just names for sugar. So um, it can go by a lot of different names. So it's just easy for manufacturers to hide how many sugar is in their product. So make sure to pay attention to all these words when you're looking at the label. And the higher that word is on the label, it means that that product contains as much, uh, the more sugar that product contains. And as another tip to pay attention to is um, look for words on the label that are that end on OSE, which is a Latin suffix that is used in biochemistry to name sugars. Again, if you see words like fructose, dextrose, maltose, sucrose, um, galactose, all of those are just other names for sugar or sugars. So just pay attention to the, these words on labels as well and be aware of how much um, sugar each product, those products contain. Okay. So when we talk about simple carbs, as I mentioned, we try to avoid them as much as possible because it's just plain sugar and it's not very nutritious. However, sometimes because the uh, simple carbs are get break broken down by our body super quickly and provide that quick energy, sometimes we need that energy when we are in a pinch. Sometimes we need quick energy just to go get through a workout or get through a very important presentation, right? Or do something important. So you need those quick um, energy um, sources. So in that case, it's okay to turn to simple carbs, but um, make sure you turn to the right simple carbs. So for example, uh, you don't want to go to cakes and cookies for quick energy. 
So sometimes simple carbs are OK to eat if you need quick energy, right? We all have been in a situation when we just need to go get that quick energy to get through a workout or a presentation or do something important. And we just need that quick energy when we are in a pinch. And so it's OK to use simple carbohydrates. However, use carbohydrates, simple carbs that provide a little more nutrients than just um, sugars. So, for example, we can go and have fruit. Technically, fruit is a simple carb. It's just fructose. However, fruit also contains vitamins and fiber, so it's not just simple sugar. It does provide additional nutrients that are helpful and, and wonderful for our overall health. Or milk, for example, it's also just simple carbohydrate. Technically, it's just uh, lactose, right? But milk also has minerals in it and vitamins that are good for us. So it's okay to have these simple carbs when you need quick energy. And to make that energy a little last a little longer, you can combine it with protein. And we'll talk about protein in, in just a bit. So for example, some examples of simple carbs snack that can help you when you are in a pinch and need that quick energy. Uh, an example would be choosing an apple with peanut butter, right? Or uh, Greek yogurt with nuts or fruit and nut trail mix. So those are simple carbs with a little bit of protein. So that would be a wonderful, wonderful snack that can keep your energy, gives you energy quick and um, make it last a little longer. Well, now let's talk about complex carbs, right? So complex carbs contain longer chains of sugar molecules um, than uh, simple carbohydrates. And so the body, body converts these sugar molecules into glucose um, slower. And then um, this glucose is then used for energy. And because complex carbohydrates uh, have longer sugar molecules, it takes longer for our bodies to break them down. And therefore it provides, um, the glucose is released in our body slower and therefore it lasts longer. It gives us longer lasting energy. So we want to include more complex carbohydrates in our diet because they can provide that longer energy for us throughout the day. So what are some of the co co uh, complex carbohydrates we want to uh, include in our diet? Well, let's start with whole grains. Whole grains is something that we hear about all the time. However, not everybody even knows what whole grain means. So I kind of wanted to make sure uh, everybody kind of understands what whole grains even uh, mean as a um, as a term. So the whole grain, when we talk about whole grains, it's basically the seed or kernel of a plant of some sort. And that kernel, when it's whole, is it's in complete form. That whole grain, uh, the whole kernel, the whole seed is used to make a product. And a kernel usually consists of three parts. It's the bran, it's the endosperm, and the germ. And each of those parts have some nutrients. For example, bran is fiber rich, right? And it protects the seed um, from, from, uh, from outside sources and it contains B vitamins. The endosperm is the carbohydrate of, of the seed, of the kernel, it's the starchy part. And the germ is also a small part of the kernel that has um, some vitamins and also healthy fats. So when we're talking about whole grain, again, it means that the whole kernel was used for the product. A lot of the processed foods that are that we use in our diet um, don't use whole grain. They it means that the the flour uh, the kernel was stripped of all the of the bran and and the germ. And what was left is just the endosperm. So during the milling process of the of the grain, um, those important nutrients were stripped, and so then the the only left part is endosperm, and that's what we use in all the in a lot of products like cookies and white bread and um, white rice and white flour. Again, that makes the product taste a little better. It make it makes the product last longer on on store shelves. However, those products offer very very little nutrients. 
So now that we know what whole grain means, let's also talk about what other complex carbohydrates we should be adding into our diet. We should include cereal, a whole grain or whole wheat. We can include corn and oats and rice and peas and vegetables and nuts. All of those are considered complex carbohydrates and those are the foods that will provide you with sustaining energy throughout the day. Quick note about the fruit again. So as I mentioned earlier, fruit is considered simple carbs. It consists of fructose, right? Fructose is simple sugars, um, but it does have a lot of wonderful nutrients in it. So please do not be afraid of fruit. And we should be adding fruit into our diet as much as possible. Strive for two, three servings of fruit every day. And um, please don't be afraid of fruit. Eat more of that. Uh, another carbohydrate we should be adding to our diet is fiber. Um, we may not even see fiber as carbohydrate, but it is. Um, it's just a different type of carbohydrate. Um, it's mostly found in plants and it's actually indigestible by the human body, which means that our bodies do not break it down um, into glucose uh, like with other carbohydrates. and our bodies derive little to no energy from fiber as, as it is um, by comparison to other dietary carbohydrates. Um, so a typical dietary fiber example would be a cellulose. However, remember how we said that our, the key to sustaining energy is to eat carbohydrates that release um, glucose into bloodstream slower? So even though fiber as is, is not energy producing, it does play a role in creating that gradual boost of long lasting energy. Um, because um, what happens when we consume foods with fiber, fiber actually slows down the rate at which sugar is absorbed into the bloodstream. And as a result, we get that gradual release of energy in the bloodstream. And that's what we want. So that's why we want to add fiber into our diets as much as possible. And that keeps, you know, our blood glucose level from rising, keeps us steady and keeps us full longer as well. So let's talk about how much fiber we actually need, right? Um, so this slide offers a few recommendations. So uh, if you're a man, you want to aim for 30 to 38 grams of sugar um, fiber per day. Depending on your age, if you're a woman, you want to go for 21 to 25 grams of fiber a day. Now, on average, if you're consuming any food, try to make sure that if you have at this food or that serving of food has at least three grams of fiber um, per serving. Now, if you can go and find foods that have more than that, that's even better. So uh, five grams of fiber per serving is an excellent source of fiber. So strive for foods that have that. And that slide, really, we're not going to go one by one, but that slide offers some examples of how much fiber you can get from different types of foods, right? From fruit and grains, beans and vegetables. Maybe you can print that out and then um, put it on your refrigerator, but that's a great reference. For example, raspberries, just one cup can offer eight grams of fiber. Isn't that great? Or, you know, we all know that uh, beans and legumes offer a lot of fiber. So make sure to add that into your diet. Um, but even broccoli, right? One cup, five grams of fiber. So very important for your diet. So moving on, and another uh, macronutrient that you need to add to your diet for energy is protein. So even though, as I mentioned, carbohydrates provide the most energy and they're mostly, uh, they're most easily accessible source of energy for our cells. Um, however, protein is also important. Um, when we eat protein, our body also turns it to glucose and our body uses it for energy. But Protein takes longer to digest and takes longer to release in the bloodstream in form of glucose. So again, that provides, um, that process is slower, therefore um, the energy from protein is a little longer. And it also, protein keeps us 
full longer. So that's a wonderful, wonderful way to keep our energy up. And ideally what we want to do is um, combine carbohydrates with protein. So we'll talk about it in just a second. So this slide is just offering you some suggestions for the types of protein to eat. Um, so, you know, look for foods that offer protein and maybe a little bit of fat, like nuts and seeds and natural nut butters. Look for protein that is lean, like low fat cottage cheese, part skim string cheese, um, Greek yogurt, non-fat, fish, poultry, egg whites. Um, so all of those are wonderful sources of lean protein. And also make sure to look for protein that has a little bit of fiber. For example, beans, nuts, seeds, all of those are great sources of fiber. And so ideally what we want to do to create that uh, sustained energy throughout the day is to keep our blood sugar levels um, controlled and steady by combining carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates with um, some protein. So that will prevent all the sharp spikes and crashes. Um, so this is some examples of some of the combinations between uh, carbohydrates and protein that you can, you know, borrow and get inspired with. But for breakfast, you can have steel cut oats and uh, some walnuts maybe pair it with some fresh fruit. Um, you can look at, for lunch, you can do whole wheat turkey wrap and add a little bit of veggies and a little bit of mustard. So just some ideas for you, but again, just remember to have meals or snacks that offer complex carbohydrate, a little bit of protein and fiber. And let's not forget about micronutrients. So macronutrients are the nutrients that we our body needs in larger amounts, like carbohydrates, uh, like, uh, like proteins, like fats. However, um, we also need micronutrients. Our bodies don't need my, my uh, our bodies need micronutrients in small amounts, but they're just as important because um, they provide us with really uh, important vitamins and minerals. So this slide just offers you some suggestions for micronutrients that can help you with energy throughout the day. So vitamin Bs or several vitamins Bs are critical for energy. They, um, they provide you with more energy. They aid immune, in, uh, immune system. They support metabolism. They promote mental health and they uh, ensure mood stability. And so vitamin Bs are important to add to your diet. And the good news is that most vitamins, uh, vitamin Bs can be um, consumed through different foods. So on that slide, you can see uh, what kind of vitamin B we're talking about, what it does, and which, uh, which, fo which food source you can um, uh, get it from. And let's not forget about folic acids and iron. Those are the vitamins that also um, aid in, in energy, and production and also fight um, fatigue. So wonderful slides to pay attention to. And before we wrap up, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the timing of your food consumption, because it's not just about what kind of food we eat, right? But also about when we eat the foods. So it's important to eat consistently throughout the day, because if we go too long without food, we, the, and then our blood sugar levels drop low, and that's when we feel very lethargic, very tired, fatigued. So we don't want to get to that point. So it's important to eat throughout the day several times and keep that blood sugar levels uh, steady. So uh, try to eat breakfast. Breakfast is important, and um, if, if you're missing breakfast, you know, for whatever reason, you know, sometimes we're not hungry or, you know, we think that we'll missing breakfast will aid with our weight loss goals. Um, however, it's been documented that eating a healthy breakfast can reduce cravings later in the day. And it also encourages us to make healthy choices throughout the day. And it just keeps us fuller longer throughout the day. So we don't overeat later. Um, and again, try to space your meals and snack uh, about four or five hours apart. So again, to avoid that spikes in blood sugar 
and then um, dips in your energy. And if we're when we are talking about energy levels, we also need to think about other aspects of our life. Uh, my apologies, sorry. We need to think about other aspects of our life that go beyond food, right? So one of them is staying hydrated. Um, what is the main component of, uh, of blood? And so it's essential to help carry nutrients to the cells and take away you know, all the waste products. Um, However, if our body is short on fluids, if we are dehydrated, that's the first sign uh, when, when we feel fatigue and tired. So stay hydrated to, again, to keep those energy levels up. Exercising is another way to keep your energy levels up throughout the day. Um, you know, regular exercise, I know it sounds a little kind of um, contradictory. We exercise, we get tired, however, um, Exercise is wonderful for energy. It keeps us energized and mentally alert throughout the day. So make sure to incorporate at least 30 minutes of exercise every day. And then, of course, take a look at your sleep, right? We sleep is important. It's a critical foundation for overall health and is a source of abundant energy. So try to get enough sleep throughout the day. And let's look at other things, um, our daily routine that's important for energy, right? So it's Food is important, how we um, nourish our bodies is important. However, we can do more than just eat right. One of the things we can ensure to stay energized throughout the day is to stay hydrated. So um, eat, ha staying hy hydrated and drinking enough water is critical because when we are dehydrated, that's when we start feeling fatigued and tired. Exercising is another thing that we need to pay attention to and incorporate in our uh, daily routines, even though feels contradictory, right? Oh, if I exercise, I don't have energy after that to do anything. However, exercise is a great, great uh, source of energy and it keep, keeps us alert and um, mentally energized throughout the day. So a lot of times we go exercise and then we feel like we can conquer the world after that. And of course, pay attention to how much you sleep, right? Sleep is critical to our overall health and it's um, it's important to try and get at least eight hours of sleep a day if possible. I know, you know, in healthcare shifts are so different and not everybody's able to to get eight hours of sleep a day. However, um, it's a critical foundation of rest and super important for uh, for abundant energy. So make sure to sleep enough. And then also take break throughout the days. Taking break throughout the days um, gives you an opportunity to kind of refresh your mind, uh, go outside and refocus and just um, re-energize. So that is important to incorporate into your day and uh, that will also help you with sustained energy throughout the day. And this slide just offers some uh, suggestions for good recipes to add into your diet. All these recipes are um, from reputable websites, and they will ensure that all the ingredients in those recipes are good. And those are the recipes that can help you eat right and uh, make sure you eat the meals that help you keep the energy up throughout the day. Well, we're out of time, so I'm sorry we don't have uh, any time left for questions. So I apologize. However, if you do have any, any questions about this presentation today, please, please email us at sharpesthealth at sharp.com. I appreciate everyone taking the time today to join me at this webinar. Hopefully you learned something new and thank you so much. We'll see you next time.